Hi, everyone. I'm Jeff Bast, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about V8 and a couple of the neat things it does to make JavaScript faster. So first of all, what is V8? Well, V8 is an open source JavaScript engine developed and maintained by Google. It compiles JavaScript to machine code, which is one thing that helps it run quickly. It's written in C++, which is a somewhat lower, lang lower level language than JavaScript, uh, which is another thing that makes it fast. And finally, it's really important to JavaScript developers because it not only is the JavaScript engine that is running underneath Chrome, but Node.js as well. And it's really one of the main things that has allowed JavaScript to become such a powerful force in the industry today and be used uh, not only in the front end, but in the back end as well. So what's so great about V8? Well, in order to answer that question, we have to talk a little bit about JavaScript and take a step back and, and look at some of the good things and also some of the bad things about JavaScript itself. So as we all know, JavaScript has some great features. And one of those features is dynamic objects. So JavaScript objects are incredibly flexible in the sense that since JavaScript is not a strongly typed language, uh, we have a lot of uh, looseness here, right? Which, which allows us a lot of flexibility. Properties can be added, modified, or removed all at runtime. So if you look at our example here, we have a stack, uh, not a data structure, but a stack like we're studying here. And uh, we're initializing it with a bunch of properties. But then below the initialization, we can actually modify the database to switch over to SQL. Uh, we can delete the old name of the stack. And then we can also add new properties, like this new names property here. We can't quite decide what it's going to be called. Uh, but we can start it as a string. And then because we don't have strong typing, we can even uh, reassign that new names property from a string to an array. So this is great. It allows us to do a lot of things as developers, uh, but unfortunately, there is a cost to that. There's a, a dark side. So if we think about how memory works in a lower level language like C++ uh, that does have stronger typing, it allows us to do something in memory like this. This is a simplification of how objects are actually stored, uh, but basically it's a contiguous buffer of memory. Uh, so when we go and access the properties on this object, we essentially know exactly where we're going to go. We find the object, and then each property is stored at a fixed offset from the beginning of that object. So when we have the machine executing these instructions to, receive the prop to retrieve the property, uh, it's a, usually just one instruction, and it's very, very fast. JavaScript, on the other hand, uh, traditionally objects are implemented as hash tables. So in order to go and find a property on an object, we have to run it through the hashing function and then go and look it up dynamically. So it works, but it's an expensive process. It's really not very fast uh, comparatively. So JavaScript object retrieval looks a little bit more like this, unfortunately. And this is the outcome. Uh, when we compare the two languages, uh, at least the way JavaScript is traditionally implemented, uh, we end up with certain benchmarks showing C++ somewhere around five times as fast as JavaScript for a lot of uh, you know, pretty common comparisons here. So wouldn't it be great if we could take advantage of the flexibility of JavaScript dynamic objects when it was necessary, but then in most of the other cases where we're programming in a slightly more object-oriented style, we wouldn't have to suffer uh, such huge con consequences in terms of performance, uh, especially when it comes to property lookup on objects. So here comes V8 to solve that problem for us, or at least take us uh, quite a bit of the way there. So V8 essentially uses two separate techniques uh, that are related to make JavaScript property access much faster. First one is hidden classes, and the second one is inline caching. So when V8 uh, actually gets an instruction to create a JavaScript object, it's actually not creating a hash table, uh, ha a hash table uh, like we would normally see. It's actually under the hood creating these hidden classes each time a new object is instantiated. So if we have our stack constructor function here, which initializes a bunch of these properties, uh, when we get down to that bottom line where we create a, uh, a sane object, that's the name we'll go with for this one, what V8's doing under the hood is it's creating a new hidden class here. We'll call it C0 for this particular example. And initially, that is just a, a blank, empty object, has no properties on it. Once we get into the function body, the constructor function body, and we hit that this.db equals db uh, instruction there, 
V8 is going to do a few more things. It's going to create a brand new hidden class under the hood, uh, which has a DB property at offset zero. So now we're taking advantage of this idea that we can store object properties as contiguous buffers and not have to go looking all over the place for them, running them through hashing functions, things like that. So it creates a brand new hidden class. And at the same time, it's also creating a class transition on the initial C0 class, uh, which is basically just saying if we have something, some object of class C0, and then we add a DB property to it, we're going to transition and start using hidden class C1 to represent that object instead. Same basic thing happens when we hit that next line. It creates a brand new hidden class. C2 still has DB at offset 0. It now has the server property at offset 1. And you can see hidden class C1 got its own class transition, where if we have something of hidden class C1, you add a server property to it, we're now going to transition to hidden class C2 that has both of those properties. And the same basic pattern is followed as we go through the rest of these steps here. Uh, one of the great things about this is that if we're reusing this stack constructor function to create all sorts of different stacks, the mean stack, the Sean stack, the sane stack, whatever, uh, we're going to be executing these instructions in the same basic order. And so rather than creating brand new hidden classes, when that happens, V8 is just going to use these hidden classes that were already created and those class transitions that you see at the bottom in order to reuse this optimized code. So this is one thing that in itself is already making property access quite a bit faster uh, under the hood in V8. It becomes much, much more powerful when we combine hidden classes with something called inline caching. So I'm not going to get too deep into the details of inline caching, but basic overview. Uh, let's say we have a two-string method on the stacks prototype here. And uh, this is a little bit different than the native you know, object or function toString methods here. In this case, it's just going to print out or return a string with those uh, all caps letters. So the mean stack, we should get mean in all caps back here. And let's say we have another function, get name, that takes a stack object. And it employs the two string method. So because of method overloading in JavaScript, this get name method could actually be called with any object being passed into it. And as long as that object can access a two string, method, which it should be able to, looking back on the prototype chain, it's not going to throw an error. This is going to work. Uh, so what VA is doing as we hit these first two function calls, passing in the mean and then the same stacks, is that it's going to keep track of the type uh, of objects that this get name method is called with, and particularly that two string method. Since there are multiple ones, uh, it's going to dynamically look up the first two times which two string method we're using, which one we're talking about, and it's going to keep a cache of those calls to that method. Then, after two successive calls on the same type of object, VA is actually going to make an assumption here. It's going to assume that we're using the same method as was being called before. It's going to skip the lookup altogether and use optimized code in order to go and uh, call that method. So of course, sometimes uh, this assumption is not correct, and V8 does have some built-in uh, sort of um, edge guard cases in order to account for that. It will basically bail out and run de-optimized code if it finds that that's the case. But most of the time, uh, this assumption is valid, and it lets our code run much, much faster. OK, so as developers, though, why does this really matter? So I'll just leave this slide up for a couple seconds. So you can see, with inline caching added in, V8 makes JavaScript run many, many times faster. And that, again, is one of the things that makes it, uh, it really makes it possible for JavaScript to be used in so many different contexts without suffering a huge loss of performance comparative to other languages. So a couple key takeaways to keep in mind as developers. First of all, you want to try, when possible, to initialize all properties of an object within the constructor function. Uh, and this is because adding properties in a different order will actually cause V8 to use different hidden classes. You can see with those class transitions that we looked at before, it keeps track of the order that the properties are being initialized in. So try to do it all at once, all in the same order, rather than adding and removing things dynamically later on so that V8 can reuse a lot of the same optimized code. And then the next thing, as always, we want to keep it dry. 
Uh, optimized code in V8 makes calling the same method multiple times much faster than calling many different methods once because it is allowed to use those uh, inline caches to optimize code for those method calls. Thank you very much. Questions? <laughs>